All NBA teams play a long, grueling 82 game season every year, including the playoffs. But don't you realize when it's all said and done that we only talk about the teams that won the championship regardless of the regular season record? We just saw the Bucks this past season finish with the best regular season record in the league, but nobody talks about what a dominant season they had because of their first round exit to the Miami Heat. Or the 73-9 Warriors in 2016, who literally had the best regular season of all time, but lost in the NBA Finals to the Cleveland Cavaliers after blowing a 3-1 series lead. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the greatest regular season teams that you definitely forgot about. Cue the intro. Just a couple disclaimers that all the teams on this list did not win the NBA championship obviously and that all of these teams are after the year 2000. So without further ado, let's hop right into our first team, the 2014-15 Atlanta Hawks. Heading into the 2014-15 season, fans did not have that high expectations for this Hawks team as they finished as the 8th seed with a 38-44 record in 2014. They did almost take out the first seeded Indiana Pacers in the playoffs, but lost a razor close 7 game series in which they led 3 games to 2. But most fans saw that series as a fluke as the Pacers later made it to the conference finals later that postseason. The Hawks mainly had the same roster in 2015, with a core of Jeff Teague, Kyle Korver, Damari Carroll, Paul Millsap, Al Horford, and Dennis Schroeder off the bench. The Hawks started the season with a 1-3 record in their first 4 games, but improved to 21-8 around Christmas. Most fans didn't make much of this team at the time, as it was still very early in the season. But after December 26, 2014, the Hawks would not lose another game until February 2nd. And during that span, they went on a 19 game win streak, went undefeated in January, and had their entire starting lineup of Teague, Korver, Carroll, Millsap, and Horford all named Eastern Conference Player of the Month. The Hawks had 4 All-Stars that year, all their starters excluding Carroll, and finished first in the East with a 62-20 record. They would make it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals after beating the Nets and Wizards, but got swept by LeBron and the Cleveland Cavaliers in the Conference Finals. Even though their unreal season came to a pretty humiliating end, this Hawks squad had one of the most unexpected but dominant regular seasons in recent memory. The 2020-21 Utah Jazz Prior to the 2020-21 season, the Utah Jazz had blew a 3-1 series lead to the Denver Nuggets in the first round of the playoffs, in what was a hell of a series. But that playoff loss would lead to a long offseason for the Jazz. The Jazz would start the season 4-4 four four after being the 6th seed in the West last year. And with their two All-Stars, Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, plus Jordan Clarkson off the bench, fans didn't have that big of expectations for this team. But after beating the Bucks in Milwaukee to start the season 5-4, the Jazz would win 19 of their next 20 games and improve to an insane 24-5 record. The Jazz went on three separate win streaks of nine or more games and finished a shortened season due to COVID with a 52-20 record. The Jazz finished first in the Western Conference for the first time since 1998 when Stockton and Malone were their two stars. The Jazz would make easy work of the young Memphis Grizzlies in the first round, handling them in five games, leading to a second round matchup against the Los Angeles Clippers with Kawhi and Paul George. This would be a hell of a series, with the Jazz taking the first two games on their home floor. The Clippers would tie the series two games apiece, and with Kawhi tearing his ACL at the end of Game 4, this series should have been a wrap for the Jazz. But the Clippers' smart game plan to bring Rudy Gobert out of the paint by shooting 3 after 3 would be the demise for the Jazz. After leading by 25 points in Game 6, the Clippers came all the way back to beat the Utah Jazz, and sent the team with the best record in the NBA home in just the second round. This playoff loss really hurt the Jazz, as they never fully bounced back from this. The Jazz split up the team in 2022 after a first round exit the following season to the Mavs, and although this Jazz team always had questions if they could compete for a title or not, they definitely had an amazing run in 2021. And what makes them such a forgotten team is mainly the fact that they were always either a first or second round exit, and even when they had the best record in the NBA in 2021, they still couldn't get over the hump. Now the Jazz are currently rebuilding with their new all-star, Laurie Markkinen, and let's see what the future holds for this franchise. The 2006 and 7 Dallas Mavericks The Dallas Mavericks during Dirk Nowitzki's prime were always a top force in the Western Conference, as they made the NBA Finals in 2006 with 60 wins, but they lost a close 6 game series to the Miami Heat after being up 2-0. The very next season, the Mavs had a starting lineup of Devin Harris, Jason Terry, Josh Howard, Eric Dampier, Dirk, plus Jerry Stackhouse, and the Mavs were looking for revenge. 
After starting the 2006 and 7 season 0 and 4, the Mavs won 67 out of their next 78 games and finished first in the West with a franchise best 67 and 15 record. Dirk took home the MVP that season, and all eyes were on the Mavs to make a run for the title. However, though, all the hard work the Mavs went through that season was just thrown right out the window, as they lost to the 8th seeded Golden State Warriors with Baron Davis, Jason Richardson, Steven Jackson in the very first round. This loss for the Mavs is one of, if not the biggest playoff upset in NBA history, as the Mavs finished the regular season with 25 more wins than the Warriors. This loss would haunt the Mavs for years, but fast forward to 2011 and Dirk and the Mavs will get their first and only NBA title in a hard fought win against the Big 3 Miami Heat. The Mavs winning the title in 2011 helped put their embarrassing 2007 first round exit behind them, as the Mavs would still be a ringless franchise with a ton of regular season success if they didn't win in 2011. The 2008-9 Cleveland Cavaliers The early LeBron days in Cleveland even though they didn't win a championship during LeBron's first stint there, he for sure gave us a ton of memorable moments. As many of you know, LeBron didn't have the best teammates during his first stint in Cleveland. And that's not to put them down or anything, but their starting roster in 09 with Mo Williams, Delonte West, Anderson Varejao, Zadrunas Ogalskis, and LeBron of course, just did not compare to their competition at the time, which were the Spurs, the Celtics, the Lakers. However though, in the 08-09 regular season, LeBron would take home his first out of 4 MVPs and led his Cavs to a franchise record 66-16 record, which was the best record in the entire NBA. The Cavs started the 2009 playoffs flawlessly, as they steamrolled the Pistons and Hawks in the first two rounds of the playoffs, but when they faced the Orlando Magic in the conference finals, we all thought it would only be a matter of time until we saw Kobe vs LeBron in the finals, as the Lakers beat the Nuggets in the Western Conference Finals. But the magic with Dwight Howard would upset the 66 win Cavs behind LeBron averaging 38 points, 8 boards and 8 assists per game. Even though the Cavs were always a great regular season team, this series was basically LeBron's first stint in Cleveland summed up. Very good team, but a lack of star teammates really hurt them, especially come playoff time. But LeBron going back to the Cavs and winning their one and only championship helped put all of these painful playoff losses behind them as this Cavs team won 66 games and 61 the year after, but it seems like nobody talks about what a spectacular regular season they had. The 2005-6 Detroit Pistons The Detroit Pistons were seen as one of the best teams throughout the mid-2000s, as they won the title in 2004 and made the Eastern Conference Finals every year from 2003 to 2008. Heading into the 2005-06 season, the Pistons just fell short to the San Antonio Spurs in the NBA Finals, losing in a close 7 game series. The Pistons had a starting 5 of Chauncey Billups, Richard Hamilton, Tayshaun Prince, Ben Wallace, and Rasheed Wallace, and they had arguably the best starting 5 in the league, especially on the defensive end. The Pistons steamrolled throughout the regular season, finishing with a 64-18 record, the best record in the league, and they were looking to make their third straight NBA Finals. They beat the Bucks in the first round, and then a young LeBron Cavs team in the second round, but would rematch the D-Wade Shaq Miami Heat in the conference finals and lose this one in a close 6 game series. The Heat were not a bad team though, as they eventually won the title later that year, but they had 12 fewer wins than the Pistons, and the Pistons beat them the previous year in the Eastern Conference Finals. What made the 2006 season so forgettable for the Pistons though, even though they had 64 wins, was that they made the finals the two years prior, including winning the whole thing in 2004. And like what I said at the beginning, we tend to only remember the team that won the championship regardless of how good their regular season was. The 2019-2020 Milwaukee Bucks The Bucks the year prior finished with the best record in the NBA, and we also saw Giannis blossom into a superstar and take home his first MVP award. They lost in the conference finals to the Raptors in 2019, but had a young team, and were looking for vengeance the following season. The Bucks had a starting five of Eric Bledsoe, Chris Middleton, Giannis, Brooke Lopez, and Wesley Matthews, and the Bucks started the season hot, picking up an 18 game win streak at the beginning of the season to start with a 24-3 record. The Bucks would finish first in the East again, with a 56-17 record due to the shortened COVID season. Giannis would take home his second MVP in a row along with the Defensive Player of the Year award, and the Bucks were on top of the NBA world, undoubtedly being the best team in the NBA. The Bucks would make easy work of the Orlando Magic in the first round, but lose it 5 games to the Miami Heat in the second round. At the time, this was a massive upset, as the Bucks were the best team in the NBA, and this was before we knew Jimmy Butler as Playoff Jimmy. 
The Bucks would do a good job putting this miserable loss behind them though, as they acquired Drew Holiday from the Pelicans in the following offseason and went on to win the 2021 NBA Championship. Now that the Bucks acquired Damian Lillard from the Blazers and are basically seen as title favorites in 2024, it's more than likely that their 2020 season will be more than forgotten about knowing that they won the championship the very next year and that the Bucks are starting a new chapter with Dame Time and Giannis. The 2015-16 San Antonio Spurs The 2016 NBA season was truly one to remember. The Warriors won 73 games, LeBron won his first ring in Cleveland after overcoming a 3-1 deficit, Kobe, KG, and Timmy all retired, and the Spurs set a franchise record with 67 wins that went completely under the radar. And not only is it completely forgotten about today, but it was completely under the radar during the season as well. The Spurs still had their main core of Duncan, Parker, and Manu, but they also had a 24-year-old Kawhi Leonard who was starting to blossom into a superstar and took home his second straight Defensive Player of the Year award. But the Spurs also signed LaMarcus Aldridge from the Blazers, who was still in his prime and which was basically overkill to the roster at that point. The Spurs were neck and neck with the 73-win Warriors all season long, but the Warriors beating them twice at the end of the season helped them secure the first seed while the Spurs secured the second. Come playoff time, the Spurs made easy work of the Grizzlies in the first round and faced the OKC Thunder in the second round with KD, Westbrook, and Ibaka. They took a 2-1 series lead, but lost the next three games, including a blowout loss in Game 6. Even though this was technically the Spurs' greatest regular season ever, what made this season for them so forgettable was that the Spurs won five championships the past 17 seasons before this, including making the playoffs and winning 50-plus games every single one of those years. And of course, everyone was talking about the Warriors as they set the record for most wins in a regular season with 73. Even though the Spurs had 67 wins and lost to a team with 56 wins, it didn't really seem like an upside at all, considering the fact that the Spurs were an amazing team every single year, and the Spurs and Thunder have been going at it year after year during that time. And being realistic, especially in today's NBA, you're not going to win a championship every single season no matter how good your roster is. Everyone knew the Spurs would be back the following season too, and which they did, finishing with 61 wins and second in the West again. They haven't won a title since, but with the Spurs starting the Victor Wembanyama era and how good he's been looking, I'm excited to see what the future holds for this franchise. If you guys like this video and want to see more content just like this one, drop a like and subscribe to the channel for new videos every week. Thank you guys, and I will see you in the next one.